everybody. I am so excited to have my good friend John Tartaglia Hello. on for Broadway Week on Thingamavlogs. Ooh. We actually got a Broadway star on for Thingamavlogs. We can't believe it. What I thought we would do today. Okay. Instead of just a regular interview, I thought we would play Truth or Dare. Oh gosh. That okay. way we can get some like crazy answers out of you. Okay. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm scared. <laughs> but I'm up for the challenge. Yes. Okay, so should we start with just an easy truth? Yes. What was your first Broadway audition like? <laughs> Have you heard that? You you may know I wasn't sure if this was story. your first one. It is my first one. Oh gosh, okay. My very first Broadway audition was for The Lion King. I was 18. I just moved to New York City. Uh, my, my parents are both, or were and are both in musical theater. Um, and so I grew up backstage, I was a backstage kid. So I moved to New York City to work on The Muppets on Sesame Street and decided I wanted to start auditioning. Basically, I, I called my mom and I was like, what do I do? Like, I, I want to audition. She's like, we have to get a headshot. So I went and got a headshot. There used to be, back in the day, back in the day in New York City, there were like passport booths and agencies where you would go to get like your passport photo taken or you'd go to like get like a legal document photo, right? There was a passport place around the corner from me in New York City and it said, we do headshots. You do not get your headshots done at a passport agency. You get them done professionally by a, a photographer that specializes in headshots because your headshot has to say who you are. It's like an overhead shot, okay? I'm looking up at the camera, this is the pose. <laughs> I okay? love that. And I'm wearing a white collarless dress shirt with a velvet vest and a bolo tie. And I'm like this. A new Broadway show, The Lion King, coming to Broadway next year, looking for singers, dancers, and actors who are puppeteers. I was like, oh. I'm in! This is me! So here's where it gets funny. I get to the um, to the building, get off the elevator, and I see the sign for the room. I go in the room, and there are probably 50 to 60 African-American women there. And like everyone's talking, and I'm writing my name down, and everyone stops talking and looks over at me, and I go sit down. And I always like to assume that everyone was probably like, you know, while I was look looking down at my music, was probably like whispering to each other like quietly, like, Finally, the woman next to me, I always say, like, lost the bet. And so she's like, honey, are you here for the Lion King? And I was very, very certain. Like, I was like, going through my, through my music, and I was like, mm -hmm. well, you know that this is the Rafiki call, right? There were like two days. There was like the day where they were going to see ladies for Rafiki, and then there was the day they were going to see everybody else. I had gone to the wrong day. Now, now, in my 30s, I would be like, oh my god, you guys, hilarious. Bye. Good luck. I'll come back tomorrow. Not me, not 18 year old John Tartaglia. I was like, mm hmm. As confident as possible. She goes, you're gonna be fine. Right? <laughs> and I was, then they loved me because I was so confident. So finally, they, the monitor comes out and she calls my name and she's like, you know, John Tartaglia? Because obviously it was just ladies' names and then mine. There was a table of like six people. They were all talking, they were busy. I mean, you know, they're seeing lots of people. Go up to each one of them and shook each one of their hands, which is, you don't do that. <laughs> my mom said, oh, if you want, when you go take your music to the accompanist, to the pianist, you can set a tempo with them by just, you know, snapping your fingers to show them how fast you want it to go. <laughs> my nerves were kicking in and I wasn't thinking. So literally, if you're the accompanist, I put down my music and I go, okay, so I think it's kind of like this, <laughs> like in his face, which is incredibly <laughs> insulting and obnoxious. And I've had many friends who are composers be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, like when you, when you don't realize you're doing something until you're doing it, I get to the center of the room. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden it hits me, oh my god, I'm auditioning for a Broadway show. This is my dream. I'm doing audition for, for a Broadway show. So like my nerves hit me and I sang a whole new world. And this is, I'm not kidding you, this is what it sounded like. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. I got that like nervous quiver <laughs> in my voice. And they literally cut me off after, tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart, all these hand motions were real, by the way, heart decide. <laughs> and they were like, thank you so much. And I thought, <laughs> like now I'd be like, oh my God, like I'm a failure. And now I was like, that's all I need. Like they saw how good I am, that's all I need. And the guy was like, so you're a, you're a puppeteer, huh? And I'm thinking to myself like, I am in. And I was like, Yes, I am. And he's like, well, you should keep that up. Oh my God. And, and the crazy part of this whole thing is that many years later, uh, when I was doing, when I was up for Beauty and the Beast on Broadway, which I ended up doing, I was telling the story to the head of Disney Theatricals and he literally was like, that was you? He's like, people, you, that's been talked Legendary. about. The guy who came to the Rafiki call at 18 or wherever I was and sang a whole new, like it was talked about. So 
yeah, so so that's the answer. That was my first Broadway audition. It's a very long story, but uh, and that's I'm not even so the whole thing. I'm so glad I got you to tell it. Though. It's uh, <laughs> and it's become like requested at parties because people, especially by actors, because they're like everyone feels that pain. If you are a performer, auditioning is such an awful experience yeah. anyway and so nerve wracking. But when but I think that's why it was so great is I was so oblivious, like I was so naive and stupid that like like now looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking? Like I'm embarrassed for myself. But like back then, I was like. Eh. So, you were in Beauty and the Beast. Yes. You were Lumiere. Yes. In Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. So when you went into audition for that, were you like, huh, after Lion King, <laughs> like, I got this. I know what I'm doing now. Yeah, actually, well the secret on that one is I didn't have to audition. Oh. Which is every you actor's were a big dream. By that. Well, I didn't get that's yeah, I don't know about that. Well, I done have a new cue. And so um, people knew me from that, and that certainly didn't hurt. That only helped. And I was doing Johnny and the Sprites at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was about to come on television. Or I, I can't remember if it was already on or it was about to come on. Um, so so they they offered it to me. And, and what really what this is this is a, such a good example of like a, be kind to everybody, be nice to everybody, but also like don't be afraid to say what you really want because the reason I got the call was because the assistant to the head of Disney theatricals at the time um, had been the assistant company manager for Avenue Q in Las Vegas, which I had done out in Las Vegas for a few months. And he had heard me saying one day backstage, he was, we were very good friends. He was like, what roles would you want to play? And I was like, oh, and I listed off a bunch of Broadway roles and one of them was Lumiere. And I, and I said to him, I was like, but I'm, they'll never pick me because I'm too young and blah, blah. And so he remembered that. And so when they were trying to figure out a replacement, he called me and was basically like, how would you like to play Lumiere on Broadway? I was like, what? <laughs> so, and it was all because of this relationship that I'd had several years before. So I think it's, you know, I always tell that story because I'm like, look, you know, like you never know what someone's going to be doing in a few years that could make your dreams come true. Something I want to dare you to yes. do is a Lumiere voice. <laughs> okay. I haven't done it for a while. Uh, a friend, good friend of mine said, oddly, my Lumiere voice sounded less French and more like French Spanish, which is not shocking because <laughs> I'm not always the greatest with dialects, but okay, uh, let's see. Um, I almost want to like go up into the flames, like automatically. <laughs> do it, do it. I'll do it. All right, all right. <laughs> well, who'd have thought? Well, bless my soul. And who'd have guessed they'd come together on their own? That's kind of it. I but love it's, it. It's, it's, I tried to honor the Jerry Orbach version and you know it's make really it good but that i love doing it. it's my favorite thing i've ever done on broadway really so much oh so much fun it's so much fun if you could play any other character on broadway who, broadway, who would it be mm. it changes a lot mm. um because they keep coming out with new shows they keep coming yeah they keep coming out with new shows i think right now it's a combination of well i've always wanted to play mark and rent mm. but i'm getting too old so it's probably not gonna happen um miss trunchbull and matilda which if you haven't seen it you need to go see that show it's such a good show um it's a, it's a, it's the funniest role because it's it's in drag and you're playing you know this female teacher but she's like a cra she's crazy and like the music that they wrote for her is hilarious and and so someday I like to play that role. If you could have any Disney movie made into a Broadway show, who then would be your dream role? Ooh, I would want to do. Hmm, that's really hard. Well, you know, I don't know who I'd play in it, but I've always wanted Pocahontas to be on Broadway. I would have said Hunchback, but it's of course become mm -hmm. a musical, so. Yeah, and now Frozen. Yeah, Frozen. Da, ba, ba, da, da, da. Anyway. What I want to do mm -hmm. for dares okay. is just keep making you do Disney impressions. <laughs> okay, but what if they're not good? That's what's funny. Or do you not like that? No, do I'll, do, not I'll want... do whatever you want. Oh, it's a dare. It's I like a dare. bad reel. Isn't that the point? I don't have a choice. <laughs> Can you do Goofy? <laughs> Probably badly. Um, <laughs> gorge. I don't know. I can kind of just gorge. I don't know. I can't do that laugh. That laugh is uh, yeah. Bill Farmer, <laughs> who does him, is a genius. Right? We interviewed him on the show. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. That's like, good. I think everyone will kill me if I don't ask you about Avenue Q. Okay. But I haven't seen it. I mean, I'm in shock you have a team. I know, Tiffany was yelling at me over this text. Is, this is Brent, Tiffany, well done. We've known each other for a while now. Yeah. And you've never told me that. I know. I, I was feel a little bit like I this. just found out like mommy and daddy don't love each other. Oh this is God. a big revelation. <laughs> it's not because I'm avoiding it. Right. You it's, just haven't had a chance. I just haven't had a chance. Right, because it's only been on Broadway for a long time in New York Stop City. Stop it. <laughs> it's only been on Broadway, Broadway like the entire time no. in life. <laughs> but I know that you created characters for it. Yes, I was the you original not only, like, Princeton and Rod, that's right. What is different about merely stepping into a role versus literally creating a character? For Every, Broadway. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. So, well, I mean, Avenue Q, I was, I was literally part of the very, very first reading of that show through opening on Broadway. So, 
um, until I had an understudy on Broadway, um, no one ever played the role but me. So, so the excite, the cool part of that was getting to, from the ground up, create that character. They're both those characters, and so Jeff and Bobby, Jeff, Jeff uh, Marks and Bobby Lopez, who wrote Frozen with his wife Kristen Anderson Lopez, um, because they had this idea. It, it was, it wasn't totally fleshed out. It was like, wouldn't it be funny to do like an adult version of Sesame Street, where if in your twenties you could learn the life lessons uh, in the same way that you learn you know, younger kid lessons from Sesame Street. So that was the, that was the idea. So we did this presentation and it was like four songs and a couple of skits and that was it. You know, my character Princeton, who went on to just be Princeton, was called Princeton the Temp. And he was much more, like I played him much more like, <laughs> yeah, like bro, like it was very different. And like Rod was just like, <laughs> actually his name was Paul at the time, not Rod. So it was Nikki and Paul, now it's of course Nikki and Rod. But, but, but the, to answer your question, I got to develop it and I got to like, you know, see it through and, and watch the changes. And, and we, all of us, you know, with the exception of two people in the cast, had never been on Broadway. So we all had that journey together and like our director hadn't directed his own Broadway show. Our, the composers, Bobby and Jeff, had never had a Broadway show. So everyone kind of took this big journey together. Um, which is very different from doing something like Beauty and the Beast, where you're just a replacement, where you are, I was like the, you know, 12th person to play Lumiere, and I came in, you know, 13 years into the, into the run, and I had two weeks of rehearsal, and, you know, and there's, and there's not, you know, with, with Princeton and Rod, I could ad-lib, and that would go back into the script, or like, we could, we could, you know, they would try a new song, if it didn't work, we'd, they'd write something else, but there was, you were part of the creation. Something like Beauty and the Beast, which has been running for ever, you know, they were just like, just, just do the lines. <laughs> which actually was kind of nice, you know? Yeah. And of course it's based on a very beloved movie, so you have to, you know, Lumiere can't suddenly be like, you know, I'm a crazy guy. Like, it's like you have to play Lumiere the way he is in the movie. So, um, so it was, it was a, it's a different kind of scary. Like, one is, oh my God, no one else has ever done this, so I better kind of do it right. Scary, because you, you have that responsibility. And the other scary is like, oh my God, I'm stepping into a, musical that's been running forever. I have two weeks of rehearsal. I have live flames in my hand. And there's like a trap door and, and scenery moving that could run me over. So it's just, it's, <laughs> it's a very different experience. Very different experience. Okay, what about the Mad Hatter? Um, oh, yes, my dear. This oh, really good. <laughs> oh, it's not your birthday today. <laughs> Is, okay. that, is that right? Is that, yeah, is that no, it? that was okay. really good. So, okay, so you were in one of my other videos on this channel and people flipped out. So I know people are going to be flipping out. I remember that, but okay, sure. Where, where I did the tour of Henson. Oh, yeah. People are going to flip out when they see this and I know oh. so many of them are like singers and performers and would love general advice on how how to do it. How to do it all. Well, I did start, I started very young, you know, um, but I, I really, really, really believe more than anything, like that, that you you will never be successful until you are yourself. And I made a lot of mistakes when I was younger, trying to fit into things that I wasn't. It wasn't really me, but it was something I either saw myself wanting to be. You know, I always think there's a big difference between what you want to be and what you really excel at. Like you know, and, and that's not that's not a. Sometimes they go together, but like you know, sometimes we don't we don't we don't realistically look at ourselves. Because here's the thing: it's like it's a business. You know, that's that's the thing. Look, what we do is a business. It's a creative business and it's but it's show business, you know. So you have to understand like what, what your product is. What are you? How do you market yourself? Like, you know, what 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 do you fit right or what do you fit wrong? Um, and I made a lot of mistakes trying to be someone else. Like I like I was saying talking about rent earlier, how I wanted to do rent. I became obsessed with rent. And so I went to like auditions for rent, like dressed as Anthony Rapp in the show. <laughs> but which isn't me. I didn't start booking work until I started becoming true to myself. And and part of that was also breaking rules and, and not 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 doing something just because someone said you had to. I also think in this age of I'm doing it right now with you, like where you're creating your own content and you're online, like you guys have something that I never had, which is um, total access and total visibility. You know, if you wanted to be seen, you had to go to an audition or you had to book you had to book a job. That was it. Like, you know, and now you can create your own content. How many people are discovered from videos on YouTube? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. The other thing is I always say say yes to everything. Hmm. You know, Avenue Q was a was a are you available to come do this thing that doesn't really pay anything? And I had another conflict that day. And I could have said or I'd have a conflict, but something in the little voice inside of you that you should always listen to said like, "That's you should say this." Crazy. Yeah, and what if would I it hadn't, have been? <laughs> I, I, it wouldn't have been me. You know, they would have found someone else, which is wonderful. But like, I, I thank God that little voice spoke, and I listened to it, and I was like, "No, I think I want to do this." Mm -hmm. Like, you know, 
Um, and there are people I know who are like, well, I'm not going to do that because it doesn't pay enough, or I'm not going to do that because that's like, you can't, that's not how you grow. And that's not how you make contacts. People who I'm working with now are, are people that, you know, I did work for when, when, you know, they were paying me $50 for, for three days of work. I mean, but it wasn't about that. It was about the work and, and people, you know, you want to, you want to create your contacts and create your 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 world and so i think you know you, you can't be selective you have to just kind of like take it all in because every experience pays off every experience pays off what about tigger oh is it you were just gonna say tigger tiggers are great for that that's really tigers good are easy because they just kind of crazy <laughs> like me <laughs> sebastian i actually wrote you really well so, see I'm i feel like, like yeah i do voices i do voices but i feel I so know, pressured yeah. like, somebody's got to nail that girl's fiends to the floor that's just basically that's <laughs> that's not really, really, that's this not is a good. fun game. It's so great when people who are like working with Disney and have done amazing things with the Disney company are really big Disney fans at heart. Mm -hmm. There's it's not everybody. No. Which is weird when you're like in it. You're like, oh wait, you guys all aren't obsessed with yeah. this like I <laughs> So that's it's shocking. It's it's kinda shocking when people are like more like, oh, I've never seen that movie. I'm like, What? Yeah. You're here? Yeah. So you've been a Disney fan forever. Oh my god, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, since the, as young as I can remember. Should we do like Disney speed round? Okay. A favorite Disney movie. Beauty and the Beast. Favorite Disney character. Oh God. Uh, uh, um, I always have a soft spot for Goofy. Favorite Disney princess. It's a heart of that. Speed round. Speed round. It's a combination of Ariel or, or, or Belle. Favorite Disney song ever. You know what's funny? Uh, someone asked me this recently. It's You Can Fly. Aww. It took me a while to think about it, but it's You Can Fly. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite Disneyland ride? Uh, Disneyland would be Indiana Jones. Overall, any park in the world? Well, it, does it have to still be there? No. Uh, Horizons. What about favorite Disneyland show? Well, I'm really obsessed with Paint the Night. Now. Oh my god, I was it's hoping you'd so say Paint the Night. <laughs> good. And you know what's funny? I'll be honest. I was that person who was like, an updated version of the Electrical Parade? We'll see. And you know what? I was like, <laughs> the very first night I saw it, I was like a mess. I actually really like Mickey and the Magical Map. Oh my god. Did you talk about this with Patrick? No. Oh my god. He's a He dressed up as a map maker for Halloween. I did not know that. No, I may be like that person who's like in my car like, to imagine things. So that's all I have for you. Okay. Where can people find you online if they uh, want to? It's so awful. I'm the worst with social media. So here's the thing. I have a Facebook page. Okay. It's like a fan page. It's just my name, John Tartaglia. Mm -hmm. um, there apparently is someone saying that they're me on Twitter, but I, I'm not on Twitter. Okay. It's not me. But I'm going to be on Twitter. My goal this year is to be on Twitter and Instagram. I'm not done it yet. And I'm launching a website. Hopefully in the new year, officialjohntartaglia.com. So I will link to your Facebook account in the Yay. description below. By the way, so wait, can... Tiffany, Tiffany, thank gave... you for these wonderful shirts. From Who's It's and What's It. They're so awesome. Yes, we They're got really, really awesome shirts. So thank you for telling us your embarrassing stories and you letting are... me dare you to do Disney impressions and being a general Disney nerd with us for Broadway Week. Always, it always. It is an honor and oh, Go check John out. Link in the description, singular link in the description box below. Give this video a thumbs up if you had fun playing Truth or Dare with us. Subscribe to Thingamavlogs, and we'll see you guys real soon. Bye.